This is Arlo. Say hi, Arlo. Hi. Oh, this is Arlo. Say hi, Arlo. Hi. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's try again. You ready? Oh, this is Arlo. Say hi, Arlo. Say hi. Yes. Uh oh. Not the microphone. Can you say hi? Hi. Guys, I'm super excited today. This is Arlo. He's my uh, new puppy. He's an uh, eight-week-old, 100% European uh, Doberman, and uh, I'm super excited to have him. Finally, uh, we found a breeder we decided to work with. Uh, we found the puppy that I think was right for us, and um, I wanted to introduce you guys to him. You'll be seeing a lot more of Arlo on my channel on Doberman Planet. Um, he's hopefully... Hey, come here, buddy. Come here. He's, uh, he's got a lot of spunk in him right now. And um, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about Arlo and how we found him, kind of the process I went through to locate the breeder I was going to work with and find the specific dog that I actually wanted to get. So this is like only, I think, day three with Arlo and uh, he's doing really good. We're already working on our potty training. We're working on uh, things he should and shouldn't be uh, munching on and mouthing with his teeth. And um, he's just, he, he's showing a lot of really good signs. Uh, when we give him some training pointers, he clearly makes an effort to uh, change his behavior next time. I've noticed that already, um, and uh, I think he's going to be a really good dog. Um, so, yeah, a little bit about the process that I use to find the breeder I'm, I decided to work with. Um, while I'm talking, I'm going to throw in plenty of clips of Arlo here so you can kind of see. Oh, come here, come here. So you can see more about him and uh, kind of how he is. Uh, first things first, guys, as you notice, um, Arlo's ears are cropped. This breeder crops all his puppy's ears. Um, every litter gets cropped. In fact, um, Arlo was kind of a last minute thing. Um, we had a deposit down with the breeder. He called us pretty shortly actually. And um, one of the litters that was apparently all spoken for, um, I don't, I believe maybe someone backed out or something. And uh, they had another black and rust male available, which was Arlo here. And, um, you know, I wasn't entirely convinced until I met Arlo to make sure he would be a good fit for our family. Uh, but we uh, went down there, and uh, when we first saw Arlo, it was only a couple hours after he got in his ears cropped, so it was already too late. That breeder basically decided for us. Really, my wife and I were middle of the road about whether or not we want to get his ears cropped, so we were kind of back and forth. The decision was basically made for us, which is fine with us um, because we were kind of undecided anyway. Um, so he'll be, we'll be wrapping his ears for I don't know however many months until until we're done with that. Uh, but he's a great dog. We're super happy to have him. So the process that I went through to find a dog, um, the first thing I did was I just made a, a spreadsheet and I went through all the directories that I've mentioned to you guys before for finding a breeder. Um, I have an article on my website uh, that lists all the directories and sources to find a Doberman. I basically used every single one of them. I think right now I have 13 different directories or resources for finding breeders. Um, I will put a link in the description down below of that article so you can see those uh, directories that I used. And I basically made a running list of every breeder I could find within a reasonable driving distance to me. And I, I wanted it to be a reasonable driving distance because I wanted to make sure I see the dog before I decided for sure it was the right dog for us. I did not feel comfortable just um, paying a deposit and telling a breeder, yes, I want one of your dogs without meeting the specific dog and giving the final okay that yes, this is a temperament that'll work great with our family. So I wanted to be reasonable driving distance. I wasn't into shipping the dog or anything like that. So I think we decided maybe an eight or 10 hour drive would be the most that we would do. Um, so I got a small family, I got two kids. So um, that's the limit we put on it. So we, we made a list of every breeder we could find within eight or 10 hours. 
And of that list, we just started eliminating breeders for different reasons. Now, the first one was health testing. We started calling all the breeders, finding out what health testing they did. Any breeder that said they do no health testing or there was major problems in their description of their health testing that indicated to me that they, uh, they didn't care very much about health testing. Um, any of those breeders, I eliminated from the list. Uh, the next thing I did was uh, I went through the list and found any of them that had litters uh, within a reasonable time frame, meaning either upcoming litters or current litters or even planned to be breeding soon. Some of them on those directories were a little bit older and they said, hey, you know, we haven't been breeding for a while. We don't plan to breed for a little while. So, of course, those ones were eliminated as well. Um, after that, my list is, you know, shrinking each time I go through one of these steps. Uh, the next step I did was um, when I was talking to each breeder, I would ask them uh, just questions about what they bred for. And depending on their answer, I would decide whether or not to eliminate them for that. Um, things I wanted was a good family dog. So I wanted a breeder who bred for temperament and, uh, and a, just an overall good, solid, steady uh, family dog. Um, what personally, what I decided I did not care about was show titles or lineage or um, things of that, of that, um, uh, that type. So when they say, oh, well, we breed for, you know, the perfect show dogs or we breed for IPO guard dogs, you know, those people in general, assuming that they didn't then follow up with uh, and solid temperament for families, um, if they only focused on that, I would tend to eliminate those people too from the list. So now my list is shrinking even more. I'd say the biggest one after that that I, was, that I would take into account would be how the breeder just was as far as working with me. Um, now, a lot of breeders nowadays, it seems like, will tell you that they're choosing their dogs for you. And I think a lot of the reasoning for that is they believe, they know the dogs better than anybody. They, they um, have the dogs raised in their house. They've been with them the first, you know, however many weeks of their life. And um, they believe they can pick the best dog for you. And I totally understand that. Although my way of looking at it is a little bit differently. I look at it that there are two pieces to this puzzle. There's the family the dog is going into and the type of temperament that that individual dog has. I quickly eliminated any breeders who did not care about the home that um, the dog was going into, or basically my opinion on how the temperament would fit in my family environment. There were some breeders that said, no, I'll ask you basic questions and I will then pick your dog for you. You're not picking your dog. Those breeders I eliminated. Uh, that did not settle well with me uh, because they don't know my family and a handful of questions is not gonna get them to know my family. Just like a handful of my questions about their dog is not gonna allow me to know the dog every bit as well as they know the dog. So I believe there's two pieces to this puzzle and I believe what I wanted was a breeder who's gonna work together with me to help me pick a dog that's right for my family and take my opinion into account as well. So I eliminated actually a lot of breeders for that reason. I was not willing to work with someone um, like that. So, you know, it, it goes to some extremes too, guys. I, there were some breeders that said things like, um, I'll be microchipping your dog. You gotta look at the contract because the contract says some interesting things sometimes. I'll be microchipping your dog. This is one thing I'd see. Uh, and the primary contact on the microchip in the dog will be me. So if the dog gets lost, I'm the one contacted, not you. Well, <laughs> I mean, is it my dog or is it your dog? You know, so then what? So then you get my dog back if he got out one day, let's just say, and now I gotta negotiate with you to get my do dog back? No, that wasn't gonna work for me. So I eliminated breeders for those reasons too. I kept eliminating breeders until I was left with only, you know, a couple. I've told you guys before, and I wanna stress it again, you're not gonna find a breeder who is perfect, who checks off every single box. It's just not gonna happen. Um, you gotta um, decide what's important to you and then pick a breeder as best you can. Um, I wish I could say, oh, this is a checklist, have these exact things, and you got a good breeder. Um, that's not really the way it entirely works. So the breeder I ultimately selected, I think was a, just a, a great compromise for everything I was looking for. Now, as far as health testing, this breeder did what I'd consider mild to moderate health testing. He did the genetic stuff, the blood work on uh, both of Arlo's parents to kind of see what was going on genetically and what he was potentially predisposed towards. Uh, but he did not do some of the more in-depth stuff. For example, like the hip exams, uh, the Holter monitor on the heart to see the, the heart's rhythm and stuff over 24 hours. He didn't do that. He did the genetic work. 
So that's what I that's why I consider it kind of mild to moderate health testing. However, this breeder was great as far as working with me on finding the temperament of the dog that that um, I thought was best. Also, he allowed me to do temperament testing on the dog um, and the other dogs in the litter. And he would give his input as well. And we kind of come to a mutual uh, conclusion on what dog would probably be best for my family. And um, that was really important for me to find a breeder who was willing to work with me to find a dog. I didn't want to be told which dog was best for me. I just, it's a family member of mine. And I don't trust anybody to make that big enough, that big enough uh, decision for my family other than my family and me. So the breeder was great in that sense. And he bred for temperament, which is what I really wanted. He didn't breed for lineage. Now Arlo here does have some pretty cool lineage in his past, some pretty impressive stuff, but he didn't breed for that. He bred for the temperament to, and he bred for family dogs. He didn't care about show titles. He didn't care if I was gonna go um, show Arlo here or do uh, get some IPO titles or anything like that. What he really wanted was to make the best possible family dog. So that was right in line with what I was looking for. So overall, just the breeder's overall philosophy with his breeding program, um, his, his health testing, at least he did the basic stuff, the stuff that I think is really important, um, or most important anyway, and uh, the fact that he's willing to work with me to pick the dog whose temperament um, I believe fits in best with my family, I think those were the best things about this breeder. And that's why I ultimately picked this breeder to go with. I'm very happy with Arlo. I understand he could be more health tested than he is now. Um, but, uh, he, he did this stuff that I was really worried about. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we got a good temperament of a dog here. You guys are going to see a lot more of him. I'm super excited to have him. Um, yeah. So you guys, it, let me know if any questions you got about him, uh, post in the, in the, uh, description down, or excuse me, in the comments down below. I'd love to see your questions and your comments about my buddy here. And, uh, yeah, welcome him to the channel. If you would, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell icon that comes up next to it. And uh, hit that thumbs up button while you're down there. And uh, I'll see you guys in the comments down below. All right, Arlo. Let's, uh, let's go have some fun, huh, buddy? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Arlo. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Good boy. You guys remember my Doberman on patrol video, right? Where I broke into my own backyard and I encountered my guard, Doberman. We'll take a look at this. Oh man, hope I don't encounter a guard dog. Uh-oh, uh there's a guard Doberman. 